All right, welcome back. Let's start with this example. We want to approximate the area under the function f of x equals x squared plus one from zero to three using three rectangles. Calculate both the left and right Riemann sums. And so here we have a graph of our function f of x, which is x squared plus one. And what we're going to do is approximate the area from zero right here all the way over to three. And so we are looking to find the area of this shaded region. And we wanna do that using three rectangles, and we're gonna use those three rectangles in two different ways. And those two ways are the left and right Riemann sums, or you can think about it as using the left or right endpoints of your rectangles. And so we're gonna start with the right Riemann sum, or using right endpoints to calculate the area here. And the formula to calculate the area using right endpoints is the following. We have r sub n is equal to delta x times the sum from i equals one to n of f of x sub i. And so what this formula says is that if we wanna find the area using right endpoints, for an n number amount of rectangles, which we know is three, then that's going to be equal to delta x, which is the width of our rectangles, times the sum of the different heights of our rectangles. That's what this represents. And so we're summing from one to the number of rectangles because that would be the number of different heights that we would need. If we have three different rectangles, we're going to have three different heights that we're going to need to sum up before we multiply them by the width. And so before we go any further, let's draw our rectangles on this diagram here using right endpoints. And so I'll start by drawing our first rectangle. It's going to look like this. And then our second rectangle will look like this. And our third rectangle will look like this. And so notice that with each of the rectangles that I drew, that the upper right hand corner of the rectangle is touching a point along this function. Right for this rectangle, our point is along the function right here. And then for this rectangle, the point is right here along our function. And then for this rectangle, it's right here along our function. And so that's what it means to use right endpoints to calculate the area under a curve. And so then in order to approximate the area using these rectangles, of course, we're gonna be looking for the area that these rectangles take up. And notice that that's going to be a little bit more than what is actually underneath this function, right? This shaded area where we have these red lines is the area we're trying to find. But notice that these rectangles go a little bit above this function at some areas. And so because of that, this is going to be just an approximation, right? It's going to be an overestimation though of what our area actually is. And so just keep that in mind as we go about calculating this area. But to go back to our formula here, in order to calculate this area, we're going to need to find the width and the height of our rectangles. And so they're all going to have the same width and that is delta x. And delta x is going to be equal to b minus a divided by n, where a and b correspond to the values of our interval. So our interval is from zero to three, which corresponds with the interval from A to B, right? So in this case, our value of A is zero and our value of B is three. And so in this case, delta X will be equal to three minus zero divided by N, which is the number of rectangles that we are using. And in this case, we are using three rectangles. And so we'll divide by three. And so that means that delta X is equal to three divided by three, which is equal to one. And so now we can rewrite our formula. We'll have that the area using right endpoints R sub three, because N is equal to three, we're using three rectangles, is equal to delta X, which is one. So actually we really don't even need to multiply that because anything times one is itself. So we'll just get rid of that. And then we're going to have the sum from I equals one to three, of the function evaluated at our values of x sub i. And so what are our values of x sub i in this case? Well, these are going to be our values of x that correspond to our right endpoints, right? So if you look at our graph over here, our right endpoints are going to occur here at x equals one for this rectangle. It's going to occur at x equals two for this rectangle and x equals three for this rectangle. And so while that's pretty easy to find using the graph, we know that we're gonna be using the values of one, two, and three. If we didn't have that graph, how would we find that? And so more formally, the values of x sub i for when you're calculating the area using right endpoints is equal to the following. We have a plus delta x, the width of the rectangles times i. And so if you weren't sure how to find each of these x values, this is what you could use. So your first value of x, x sub one would be equal to a, which if you go back to your interval, a is equal to zero. So you'd have zero plus delta x, which is the width of one, times i, which in this case i is equal to one because we're looking at x sub one, and so you'd have one times one, 
And so zero plus one times one is equal to one. And so that would give you your first value of x, which corresponds to that value of one that we had already determined. And so you could go through this calculation for x sub two and x sub three. And so that's how you would find these x values if you didn't have a picture and you weren't sure. And there's actually an even easier way to do that, which I will show you later on in a different example when we look at calculating the area without having the graph in front of us. And I think you'll find that to be a lot easier than using this method. But I still wanted to show it in case you find that to be more useful. And so in this case, this area will be equal to f of one plus f of two plus f of three, right? We decided that our three values of x sub i were one, two, and three, which corresponds to the right endpoints of our rectangles. And this notation tells us that we're going to be summing up those three values of x evaluated on our function. And so let's plug one, two, and three into this function and see what they are equal to. So this will be equal to plugging one into our function. So we're gonna have one squared plus one, which is equal to one plus one. So that's equal to two, plus two plugged into our function. So we're gonna have two squared plus one, two squared is four, plus one is five. And then if we plug three into our function, we'll have three squared plus one, which is nine plus one, which is equal to 10. And so we have two plus five plus 10, and that will be equal to 17, which is the approximate area under the function from zero to three using the right endpoints of three rectangles. And so that is r sub three. And so that is our approximate area for a right Riemann sum. And so now let's look at how to find the area using a left Riemann sum. All right, so I cleaned up my work a little bit here. We have the same problem, except now we're going to calculate the area or approximate that area using a left Riemann sum or left endpoints for our rectangles. And so once again, we're looking for the area from zero to three under this function. And so in this case, we're still looking at the area of this shaded region here. But this time our rectangles are going to be using left endpoints. And so if I go and draw our rectangles in this case, this will be our first rectangle. And then this will be our second rectangle. And then this will be our third rectangle. And so in this case, when I drew these rectangles, we use the upper left-hand corner of the rectangle to meet the function. And so in this case, you can see that our area is going to be an underestimation because we're only going to be calculating the area of these rectangles. And so we're gonna be missing these little areas here where there is more area underneath that function. And so in this case, the formula for finding the area using left endpoints will be L sub n is equal to delta x, the width of the rectangles, times the sum from i equals one to n of the function evaluated at x sub i. And so once again, our delta x is equal to b minus a divided by n, and our number of rectangles hasn't changed, it's still three, and our interval hasn't changed either, so a is still zero, and b is still three. And so in this case, delta x is still equal to three minus zero divided by three, which means that delta x is still equal to one. And so in this case, since it's one, we don't need to worry about multiplying anything by the sum of our heights, right? The width of each of our rectangles is just one. And so if we rewrite our formula, we'll have L sub three is equal to the sum from I equals one to three of F of X sub I. And so in this case, our values of X sub I are going to correspond to the X values that line up with our left endpoints of our rectangles. So in this case, we have X equals zero, x equals one, right? That's where this rectangle is meeting with the function. And then for this rectangle, it is x equals two. So now we have zero, one, and two, instead of with the right endpoints where we had one, two, and three. And so if you're interested in the formal way of finding x sub i, just like I showed you with the right endpoints, x sub i would be equal to a plus delta x times i minus one for left endpoints. And so if you plug in your lower bound a, which is zero, you could find x sub one, and that would be equal to zero plus delta x, which we said is equal to one. And so you'd have one times i, which in this case, we have x sub one, so i is equal to one. So you'd have one minus one. And so one minus one is zero, one times zero is zero, and you have zero plus zero. And so x sub one is equal to zero, which is what we found from our graph here. And so once again, if you don't like this formal definition, I will show you an easier way to figure out what the endpoints are without a graph in an example later on in this video. So stick around if you wanna see that. And so while we could go through and find x sub two and x sub three using this method, we already determined what they are from our graph. We know it's zero, one, and two. And so that's what we're going to use to calculate this area, which is what we'll do next. So L sub three will be equal to f of zero plus f of one plus f of 
2. And if you plug 0 into our function, we'll have 0 squared plus 1, which will be equal to 0 plus 1, so that means we just have 1. And then if we plug 1 into our function, we already did this before, but we'll do it again. We'll have 1 squared plus 1, so we have 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. And then plug 2 into our function, you'll have 2 squared, which is 4 plus 1, and so that will be 5. And so in this case, our area will be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 5, which will be 8. And so that is the approximate area under this function using three rectangles and left endpoints. And so that is L sub 3 in this case. And so to kind of conclude for this problem, since we looked at it from using right endpoints and left endpoints, we can conclude that since R sub 3 was equal to 17, right, that's what we found earlier, then we can say that the actual area is going to be less than 17, but greater than eight, because we determined that the area with right endpoints was an overestimate, and the area with left endpoints was an underestimate. So we know that the actual area will be somewhere between 17 and eight. And so that's kind of a nice result that came from doing both of those Riemann sums. But for the rest of our examples, we're just going to be looking at one or the other, and so that's where we're going to go next. Let's look at another example. So for our next example, we have approximate the area under the function f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 1 from 1 to 13 using four rectangles and right endpoints. So that means we're using a right Riemann sum. And so in this case, you notice we do not have a graph to look at here. And so we won't be drawing any rectangles or using a graph to find our values of x sub i. We will have to use a different way to find those values. And so we'll start by noting that we're going to be using right endpoints and four rectangles. And so that means that we are going to be solving for r sub four, right? And that's going to be equal to delta x, the width of our rectangles times the sum from i equals one to n, which is four, of the function evaluated at x sub i. And so in this case, let's calculate delta x, or the width of our rectangles, and we know that delta x is equal to b minus a divided by n, and in this case, for our interval, a is one and b is 13, right? If we are comparing it to a comma b, those values correspond to a and b. And so this will be equal to 13 minus one divided by n, which we know is four because we're using four rectangles. And this will be equal to 12 divided by four, which is equal to three. And so delta x is equal to three in this case. And so we can plug that into this formula and we'll have that this is equal to three times the sum of these values. And so in this case, here's the little trick I was talking about earlier. Here's the easiest way to figure out what your values of x sub i are going to be without using that formal definition or the actual picture of the graph. And it involves a slight bit of memorization, but not a lot. All you have to know is that if you're using right endpoints and you know you're using rectangles, so if I were to draw a quick rectangle here, just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about, we're looking at the right side of this rectangle, right? And so if we were looking at the interval from one to 13 or from A to B, the left side of the first rectangle is going to line up with that lower bound, right? Not the right side. So we know that when we're using right endpoints, that first value of x sub i, or the first value of x, is not going to be the lower bound. It would be for left endpoints, but not for right endpoints. Instead, it's going to be on the right side of the rectangle, which is going to be one width of a rectangle away from the lower bound. So to find our first value of x sub i, we would just add three, our width, to our lower bound. And so that means our first value of x would be four. And then the next value would be another width of a rectangle away. And so our next value of x would be the previous value, four plus another width, three. So we'd have four plus three, which is seven. And then we'd add another three to get to our next rectangle, so we'd have 10. And then to get to our fourth rectangle, we would add another three to get 13. And so then if we use those values of x to calculate the area in this scenario, we're going to have f of four, right? We added the width to our lower bound, one, to get four. And then we'll be adding f of seven, plus f of 10, and then plus f of 13. And so then if we plug each of these values into this function, we'll have that the area is equal to three times four plugged into this function. So we'll have four squared plus two times four plus one. And if we plug seven into this function, we'll have plus seven squared plus two times seven plus one. And if we plug 10 into this function, we'll have plus 10 squared plus two times 10 plus one, and then if we plug 13 into this function, we will have plus 13 squared plus two times 13 
plus 1. And so if we go through and simplify all of these terms, this will be equal to 3 times 4 squared, which is 16, plus 2 times 4, which is 8, plus 1, plus 7 squared, which is 49, plus 2 times 7, which is 14, and then plus 1, and then plus 10 squared, which is 100, plus 2 times 10, which is 20, and then plus 1, and then 13 squared is 169, and then two times 13 is 26, and then plus one. And so if we clean up our work a little bit here, then we can go through and add up all these terms and then multiply it by three. And so we'll add them up in groupings of three. And so this will be equal to three times, 16 plus eight is 24, plus one is 25. And then we'll add this to 49 plus 14 plus one. 49 and one is 50, and then plus 14 will get us 64. And then we'll add this to 100 plus 20 plus 1, which will be 121. So we'll have 121 plus 169 plus 26 plus 1. 1 plus 169 is 170. And then plus 26 is 196. So I have 196. And so then if we add up all these terms together, this will be equal to 3 times 406, which would then be equal to 1,218, which would then be our approximate area for this function from 1 to 13 using four rectangles and right endpoints. All right, and so before we end this video, let's look at one more final example. All right, so for our last example, we want to approximate the area under the function f of x equals x cubed plus 1 from 3 to 9 using three rectangles and left endpoints. And so in this case, we're going to be calculating a left Riemann sum instead of a right Riemann sum. And so since we're going to be using three rectangles, we're going to have L sub 3 is equal to delta x, the width of our rectangles, times the sum from i equals 1 to 3, and we'll be summing the values of x sub i evaluated on the function which will represent the height of each of our rectangles. And so let's calculate delta x in this case. Delta x is equal to b minus a divided by n, and our value of a and b correspond to our interval. a is going to be three and b is nine. So we're gonna have this is equal to nine minus three divided by n, which we said is three. And so this will be equal to six divided by three, which means that delta x equals two. So the width of all of our rectangles is going to be two. And so this will be equal to two times the sum of our values of x sub i on the function. And so in this case, I'll tell you the quickest way to find the values of x sub i for left endpoints without using that formal definition or without a graph. And that is just to remember, like I showed you for the right endpoints, that when we are using these rectangles, that the first rectangle, that first value of x we're gonna be looking for, is going to correspond to the left side of our rectangle. And so that's going to meet up with the lower bound of our interval, right? this rectangle is going to go right up against x equals three. And so since that's the left side and we're using left endpoints, we know that our first value of x will be the lower bound. So when you're looking at a left Riemann sum, your first value of x sub i will be the lower bound. And then you just continue to add delta x to find your next value of x sub i, right? And so if you're using left endpoints, you start with the lower bound. But if you're using right endpoints, you start with the lower bound plus the width. And then in either case, your next values will just be adding the width again. And so we're gonna have f of three, that's our lower bound, plus f of five, because three plus delta x is equal to five, right? Three plus two is five. And then if we add delta x again, we'll have plus f of seven. And that will be the last value because we only have three of them, right? We're going from i equals one to three. We have three rectangles, and so we're gonna have three different heights. And so this will be equal to two times three plugged into this function. Three cubed is 27, so plus one would be 28. And then we'll have five plugged into this function. Five cubed is 125, and then plus one is 126. And if we plug seven into this function, seven cubed is 343, so plus one is 344. And so if we add up these terms, this will be equal to two times 498, which would be equal to 996, which will be the approximate area under this function from three to nine using three rectangles and left endpoints. Okay, and so that was the last example for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.